let's check if we're live guys uh, awesome we're here an hour we'll call this garage studio okay. <laughs> with none other than Karan hello. so um, hello Yuvika so we wait a few minutes for people to join us so we're here um, with this awesome guy who will tell us all about himself and uh, what we do. Hello, hello, Vika. Where are you joining us from? Vivek, come on, welcome, welcome. Uh, come on in. So, um, thank you guys for coming in. So, as people are joining us, um, I don't want people to miss your intro. So, I'll show, you, show them some images as they're coming in. Hello, people, welcome, come on in. Uh, please retweet. We're going to be talking with an awesome artist whose work you could see right here. Um, we will be... Oh, thanks Vivek for inviting your followers. We will uh, begin to uh, chat in a little bit about who this artist is and what was the inspiration behind this awesome artwork. Um, how is the sound? Everything is good on, on Terra? Cool. Welcome, welcome, peeps. Thanks for inviting your followers. That's one of the cool things. So have you ever been on Periscope, Vivek, before? No, I haven't. This is my first time. First time. It's cool. So it's like, you know, just normal people talking about normal things, yeah. uh, about art, culture, whatever we want to talk about today. So uh, you are our first guest on this series of um, art work. I hope that silence was for some other people. Is that for us? People who wanted us to listen. So, he is an awesome artist, Yuvika, and we will get to learn about him. So, Karan, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, my name is Karan Turani. I'm from Delhi, India. I am originally a fashion designer and artist um, from Pearl Academy, Delhi. And uh, I was a finalist for International Talent Support 2016, which is a global uh, talent platform. Before this, I've uh, made a lot of fashion collections, uh, done a lot of collaboration with artists and crafts men from around India um, in helping them bring their craft out but uh, so but this one uh, is uh, about uh, presenting my art in a global platform so they have a selection around 15,000 people so this is the name of the event is uh, international Ta uh, talent support okay that's and the name of the organization happen? but um, what they do is um, every year they get thousands of entries no, out of which they select around uh, you know 10 people in each category so they have four categories which is fashion accessories jewelry and artwork nice. and um, they, they selected me for artwork so what are the categories it's fashion fashion accessories accessories jewelry Jewel. and uh, artwork. artwork oh nice and this is uh, from people all across the yes, world. yes all across the world in fact um, um, very few people from Asia or so to say India have ever made it on the list and uh, when I got there I actually got to know that I was the only Indian in 12 years to ever been on mm, the list nice yeah so uh, most of the other people were uh, say, from America London Slovenia I mean every part of the world actually Korea um, yeah Germany so it was quite a mix of cultures nice so let's cut to the chase let's get to learn about this piece you presented at this uh, awesome place so uh, what are we seeing so uh, maybe I could begin with um, yes, my uh, journey and um, lead on to uh, how it was I actually went to a place in Bihar called Madhubani uh, village if you can uh, yeah, make it full screen so we. Yeah. Is it possible to? The bigger, the better. We will be able to see it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So this is a village in Bihar called Madhubani, and I lived there about for a month with uh, these craftswomen. Their craft group is a cluster. These are women uh, about uh, you know who who come together to make a cluster, which is. They work on a craft which is about a thousand years old mm -hmm. and this craft was about to die almost a year ago and they decided that they really wanted to live and uh, the craft to survive for the future so they uh, made a group and cluster called Sikki uh, Jivika Gram Sangathan where the craft called Sikki which grows in their native land and in this the is ponds. a grass? What yes, is this? It's actually a natural grass called okay. Sikki which just grows in their natural ponds and because the idea for them was to make a living out of something which is totally ordinary because they can't really um, use materials which we in the city use because they don't have right. or basically couldn't afford them 
So this is just a basic glass which they invented, dyed, did something really unique. It almost is like a DIY for them, how they did it. I mean, nice. in the ancient times, but now they've used it in a modern way to um, make it really available for the uh, city or, or for the contemporary world. So they take this craft and uh, work with them. It's all hand weaved and handmade. What um, is the, what type of grass is it? What are they called, you know? Yes, I mean this grass is basically, it grows in the water, it almost is, uh, it looks like wheat. You know how wheat, wheat okay. looks, but they completely clean it and you just have almost like the grass that you have on your brooms, broomsticks. But it's a really fine version of it. Okay. It's really thin almost, uh, but so it's, and how they weave it is they water the grass every time so it becomes moist if mm, you see okay. here so it's easier for them to turn it mold it weave it and okay. um, because I mean it also is about hand making and hand weaving. the best part about this grass or the craft is it's hundred percent sustainable it's organic what do you mean by sustainable well sustainable um, people actually don't really know the real and literal meaning of sustainable right, and right. people really use it in a lot of ways yeah, sustainability exactly. is actually something a term which can be derived and used in many uh, versions you know sustainable can be something which is about providing nature or sustaining just human beings right, so right, right. Um, uh, the way this is sustainable is one that it's natural uh, yeah. it's it just grows in the nature and for the nature and even if you just leave it on the ground it is biodegradable and it has none of its materials are non-toxic like the color yes the color is all natural they actually mm -hmm. uh, use like real uh, you know uh, uh, I mean natural products they, they dry them natural dye and things probably yeah, dry them. Dyes yes, probably, yes. Right? Uh, and mix it themselves to uh, dye it will come in the next few uh, nice images slides. sure after we dye them, then they dry it themselves. And Who's that good-looking guy in the middle of the grass? <laughs> That's me. Uh, <laughs> not very, so you look very different. You look well, yeah, actually, I was actually much fitter then, and I've been like traveling and only working since a year, so I've actually lost a lot of weight and look. Yeah, no, no, you, you didn't have your glasses too. Yeah, maybe that too. <laughs> I was in my village phase, you know. I was like trying to be all all village. Yeah, with them. Nice. So, so you you were saying that you lived with them for a month. Yes, uh, I actually lived in this um, little um, um, group of. They've actually rented a place together, all of these women together, and actually it actually proves a quite a sign of women empowerment because these women actually run their homes and earn much more than their men uh, because their men actually earn only out of farming and within just a few years of them forming their group they're actually making quite a good living and mm. um, um, helping their kids survive their families work and um, so they rented this uh, little um, house in the village actually got it built with the help of the government and um, though there's still, there's still no electricity there so we lived without electricity for a month and um, uh, it's almost in the middle of a jungle of sorts uh, but they're getting it to work slowly and I lived in this uh, little house with them and uh, they helped me survive and do everything else and made my design come to reality nice 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 so they were they inspired your design very much as uh yes as a group also because I mean my project or concept titled Padma Pran which means uh, Padma means lotus mm -hmm. and Pran means soul so the concept is soul of the lotus mm. and if you actually come about seeing it is it, it grows in the ponds in nature and it actually is quite a relevance if you I didn't really think about it while uh, because that was not the intention the intention was to use the craft because it's really beautiful but uh, with time it came about that it's actually quite relevant to the craft because that craft also grows in the ponds it's all natural yeah. from the soil and comes about to its beauty and that's what nice. exactly what lotus is so I was just thinking of another title for this uh, could have been deconstructing your art because you're basically had we had the art we would show the art the, your end piece which is this is parts of it as you can see and we we, we can deconstruct it go back yes, and deconstruct sure. it right is, Most definitely. and put it together which basically what you're doing right from the inspiration and you picked up Lotus. I wanted to ask about Lotus. What is it about Lotus that is so Indian? I'll just um, give you a Oh, brief sorry. Did I go to the, your other topic? No worries. I mean, we would anyway cover those. Yeah, topics. we would go into these anyways. So, uh, you guys see the connection goes in and out for some reason, but no worries. We'll figure it out. Welcome, Lidar, Idar, Yelder, whoever. Sorry, these Twitter names are hard sometimes. <laughs> yes. Hey, giving us love. So people are sending us love. Uh, yeah, tell okay. us the Indian story. 
Well, the reason, um, you know, I mean, considering I was representing India for, it kind of became a really important thing for me um, to uh, not just actually present it well or do my job well, but um, kind of have a symbol or whatever my art piece represents, art mm. piece represents, it should kind of say something which comes um, from a personal space as well. I, I could also connect to it on many levels or everybody that I know um, or the India that I see today. So for me, it was not just about having um, either one, say, a very typical traditional Indian story, but it should also show the modern contemporary side of us, yeah. which is uh, having um, our core beliefs on the forefront. We are still very traditional and right. in our approach, but um, uh, we equally embrace technology, the science, um, how um, how the design is evolving. Let's give them a little bit more light. It's a little bit dark because I focused up. Yeah, there you go. That's good. That's good. We can see both. Yay. Okay, all right. A little more light. So uh, my inspiration was basically it arrived. I actually read a lot of mythology I'm, uh, and my stories are always evolving from there about from Indian past, Indian history, Indian stories. So it came about from Lord Brahma and his lotus. It says that uh, he basically uh, came about from the navel of uh, Lord Vishnu. He took birth in the form of a lotus. And out of that lotus came Lord Brahma and he created the universe. Right. So lotus in our mythology is considered as a symbol of creation and, uh, and beauty. And mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, and from what I know of lotus in the Indian continent, it isn't just attached to Hinduism, but also Buddhism and even Islam. Yeah. Have you did you look into the other yes, religions? Yes, most definitely. See, the and it actually wasn't much about religion because when I go further in my concept, uh, it is uh, it actually goes more on the spiritual path and just right, right. removing religion because actually the idea is uh, and the beauty of lotus in general is that it's uh, used in more than I mean in these images if you see above. Uh, in not just Indian context, but as you mentioned, Buddhism, and right. um, in in basically just even something as simple as yoga. Um, right. You know, uh, they say that your body has seven chakras, and the top chakra called the crown chakra is actually a sim symbolic reference of lotus. Right. They say your mind opens up as a thousand petal lotus, which is the Sahasra chakra, and your body feels complete and open spiritually, mm. and you finally feel uh, moksha which is content. Nice. So that is what, you know, uh, our, our history is about. It's, it's actually not really much about the religion, but uh, a lot more to do with uh, feeling content spiritually. Right, right. So, right. Um, no, which, which is, both are good, but it was interesting that the lotus is so much part of these other faiths, like especially yes. Buddha, you see Buddha sitting on a lotus yes, yes. most of and the time. You Actually, if you go around seeing um, uh, not just any Hindu deity, but any of the deities around our country, they always actually hold a lotus uh, as a symbol. And actually, uh, it is much more to do with uh, the other stories of Brahma coming out of it. But uh, the reason is it, it kind of symbolizes that you can become something a lot more even when you grow out of dirt what yes. lotus is you can be everything else even if you're around things which are not so nice so nice and dirty yeah that's nice so um cool yeah moving moving on yes yes yeah. so moving on i mean my idea of uh, representing sikki was that um, it is much more modern and it it goes on um you know, um, it, it crosses boundaries than just being a typical Indian craft, which is just hand weave. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I looked at it from a perspective of uh, what, I mean, an uh, alien person would look at it. You know, I, I forgot that I was an Indian, so I have to look at it from a global perspective because that's what I was taking it to. Right. You know, right, so for, yeah. for a person who walks in, uh, if, if I just show Sikki to you or anybody else, maybe who doesn't work with crafts, what would that person think? It's right. just a grass. And the beauty of it is that you take the most simple or the most basic material and do something so unique with it right. that it changes uh, your perception nice. about that material. So, uh, do you have a website, by the way? People are asking. Well, um, I have my Instagram accounts, and my website uh, will be up uh, in what's a week. An, what's your Instagram account? My Instagram you account know. is at the rate Karan Torani, K A R A N. So maybe he Archit will put it up. Yes. Um, Sashwat will put it up. So uh, the cool thing about Periscope is yeah. people can ask questions Almost definitely. and uh, we can make it interactive. So yeah. those of you who just joined in, some people thought maybe this is a company he's starting. So uh, Karan is an artist who recently just presented at the International Talent Support, Talent Support IST 2016 in, in Italy. Yes. And, uh, and you have a cool tattoo. 
yes. as well. You're gonna. Sh what does it say? Well, this is as well. Um, this as well is a Sanskrit quote. Again, like I told you, I'm quite into mythology, which means it says "Nabhuto uh, Nabhavishyati," which means um, "Bhuto" means past and "Bhavishyati" means future. So it means that nobody has been like you in the past, and nobody will be like you in the future. Nice. So you're unique, and so you use. Uh, someone's asking, have you done uh, exhibitions in the past? Oh yes, um, I'm actually originally I was an um, artist and then I went on to become a designer. Uh, I, I, I graduated, I mean my schooling was done in Delhi from KR Mangalam GK2 and so I, I started with doing a lot of art um, in um, early on when I was a child. So very early on in my career, actually not really as a career career but just as a hobby, I started doing exhibitions while I was in school. and. Uh, so I've, I've done a lot of presentations and exhibitions around Delhi and Bombay nice. and then I chose to become a designer and uh, in Pearl Academy and since then as well I've uh, presented at Will's debut, um, um, done my college shows and presentations Nice. and okay. then so this happened. And this, so this is your first international presentation would you say? Well yeah. Exhibition? <laughs> yes. Nice, nice. nice. Well, yeah. Welcome King. Uh, some people have some interesting uh, usernames. Which I like to shout out to. There's one guy named Sleepy Safe, Sleepy. and to him I want to say thanks for waking up and joining <laughs> us on this. Uh, yeah. I love being lazy as well. That's my Carlitos, 84. Thing. From Small. where? Donde esta Carlitos? Uh, as I was saying, welcome, welcome. So we have cool people joining us. Um, uh, those of you joining us, we're talking with Karan, an exhibition artist. Is that an exhibition artist? No, that's not a term. I'm a it? designer. He's a designer. That as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, moving on. So now tell us a little bit about the process of what it took to put it all together. Yeah, um, coming to process, uh, maybe I could show you a little video of how it came about. Oh uh, yeah. But um, I yeah, don't, so you, I don't Do you want to really go to the video? Yeah. Okay guys, pay attention to this cool video or not pay attention, but watch it out. I'm going to zoom in and we'll have an awesome video. Featuring Karan. people liked it some people said claps guys let's hear some claps Yay! everybody does not want to make a noise while we're on yeah we're getting loves yeah thank you guys so uh, a lot of people liked loved the music actually Tohid loved it thanks you guys uh, who, who did the music well the music is uh, uh, the 
name of the song is called Birha. It's from uh, um, two artists um, in who sang in Coke Studio season four. So I um, kind of took the rights for the little title. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Um, cool. Let's. Uh, yeah. So that was a beautiful, uh, beautiful music piece. I, I mean, the beautiful piece. Did you edit it yourself as well? Uh, yeah, for the video, I mean uh, everything. I mean uh, all the editing, mixing, and putting the pictures and everything together. I wanted to do it myself because I mean also because I actually didn't really plan to make the video because my that wasn't really a part of my presentation or the job that I had right. to do there. But what I decided was that since I was showing the artwork, it's very important to show who the people behind it are as well. Um, and when I was traveling, I kind of just took little Snapchats or videos that you do in your phone, you know. So all of this is actually just made on my iPhone. No way. Everything. You kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Everything was on my iPhone, and randomly, like I was just in 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 that bike going to the village, and I thought, okay, let me just take a selfie video and just send it to my friends that I'm on this bike in this weird village where I don't know anybody. So it was wow. fun. And during and after I was done, I realized I have all these videos. So I might as well just do something out of it, and I clap them together. That is amazing. I thought you really shot it for this purpose. So, but oh. you, this is this was wow. This is really cool. <laughs> this is this is good info. Yeah. So the video people, what we'll do is send out a link as well on our. Uh, how about you tweet a link to the actual video, uh, Sh Shankar uh, Shashwat as well, uh, so people could see it in its yeah, fullest yeah, in clarity, highest glory. Yes. Yeah. It's, it is on YouTube, right? <laughs> Does he use GI and geographic and what protection of? It? GI geographical indication. I don't know what that is. What is a GI geographical mark? Do you know? No, we don't know. Do explain. We don't know what that is. Just ask what it is. So for protection of your arts work, if you're using some GI geographical mark, I don't know what that is. Well, um, actually, something. generally, um, I think of course you always register your artwork, or you, um, you know, I mean, of course, for to protect it from getting plagiarized or somebody copying it. Yeah. But generally, um, that's that's if you're making that artwork for a sale purpose. Right. This artwork was made uh, only for a presentation, which was at um, ITS and in collaboration with Swatch. Uh, Swatch is the brand who sponsored the entire contest mm, and nice. who got together 10 people around the world. Swatch is the watch brand. So they decided... Tweet to Swatch. Uh, um. those, that brand decided that, I mean, after the contest is done, they own the rights to the artwork and they will protect it or do all the other things that nice. the person is asking. That we so you were selected first and in, then you did the artwork? Yes. Actually what happens is that you earlier send your previous work as a portfolio. So mm -hmm. I, I send the work that I've done in the previous four or five years to ITS um, and that was majorly fashion work, sometimes crafts work uh, that I sent. And then they select you and put you in whatever category that they want to put you in because I've also done accessories and fashion before. Thanks so they couldn't put me in any category. But they chose artwork because maybe the, my, uh, my work before represented more of craft, mm -hmm. which it always is nice. uh, as a constant. Yes. So I'm excited to move forward through your presentation with yes. the the process. Uh, some people said GI is a process of um, copywriting your traditional artwork. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. cool. Thanks for letting us know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool. Let's go to. Um, I mean, there a lot has gone be behind this. So yes. So well, um, you know, I mean, what one would think is that considering I, I used a craft or this was about a craft story coming out to the global world, uh, there isn't much of uh, technicalities, but that isn't really true. But uh, because um, my idea, like I said before, was to take contemporary and the past come together to uh, basically really show the future of our country. So I went about doing, you know, form explorations, uh, doing designs in various forms. I also tried if I think uh, if I could make, you know, uh, make mix the present day materials, say plastic or something else, with uh, a sikki, but again, that wasn't sustainable for me and isn't really going much towards the future. Right. So uh, the idea was Welcome that Ash. its core could be something which uh, represents the future, you know. So mm. the the whole uh, the presentation or identity has a wow factor as well. Nice. So I I wanted to include a bit of movement to it. And then came about the entire engineering element of it, which totally took my life away. Uh, <laughs> I, I included, because I haven't done much of, you know, those science things and having motors and wires. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I was only playing with them for a month while doing Sikki. So I, uh, I introduced this little motor, if you see it in my bag. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Everything is visible when you showcase. Yes, yeah, so it was about, I almost, uh, it was almost deconstructing like he mentioned before. So I almost broke a fan played with it, how could I move the entire lotus, how a fan moves, 
But then again, I wanted in a very slow speed and right, it right. couldn't be heavy. I had to take it with me to Italy, which uh, was again a task. <laughs> But um, and uh, so so I, I broke out a fan, mixed things with it, and we we introduced a re regulator with it, and then this is how all the ah. elements come together. So there was layers of petals, which was almost sit, which would sit on the motor, which helps it rotate and represent. The idea of movement was also uh, much more symbolic than just having a, a, a wow factor, because for me uh, it it had to show how life keeps going on. Uh, also, how how you how your soul feels, you know, mm -hmm. when you're actually evolving. Like I mentioned about the chakras before, the lotus kind of represents the seven chakras of the human body, and uh, for me, it had to show the movement of a chakra, and hence right. the the uh, it to rotate. Um, nice. This nice. is how the artwork finally looks. I mean, wow. in the back, if you look at it. I wanted to see this at scale. Do you have anything? Yes. Well, show us this, and then you can show us. Uh, Somebody standing in front of it. Isn't the space dark or is it was We have This is me standing next to the Okay, artwork. there it is. Oh so it's rotating on the wall? Yes. That's what? that's actually that was the biggest challenge because if you keep it uh, like this it's still easier for you to achieve it or like a fan because if it's upside down. Yes. But the sideways. challenge was to keep it on the wall and still have it rotating because it needs complete balance and then you had everything had to be balanced on all sides. It also actually has thousand petals in it. Um, each and what? thousand sikki petals and each petal kind of takes one hour for these women to weave because it's that small but it still takes an hour to weave and all of them are dipped in different colors and dyed differently separately right, right. Oh, and wow. uh, the thousand petals were actually selected uh, or thought of very precisely because again I was very uh, focused on having the Sastra Chakra which is the crown chakra of your seven chakras to show like a uh, thousand petals uh, yeah. your mind blooming up yeah. yes. somebody said must be costly well it or ended up being quite a lot because uh, you know even if uh, the craftsmen or the women wouldn't charge as much. Uh, the cost of traveling for you, traveling and taking this artwork back with you, uh, that is a lot mm -hmm. because you know, how would you bring it back from Bihar? It was quite huge. It's four feet by four feet. Uh, it's almost, uh, I'm standing actually a bit away from it. Do you have so anything yeah, closer to the, uh, yeah, I'll show from you. the sides? Do you have, uh, hello Zafar. This is how it actually yes, moves. Yes, you have a name. There you go. Sorry. Oh wow, look at that. That's quite a speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you show it to us again? Sure. That's, that's... So you see the movement of the artwork. Wouldn't it be awesome if you had it here, we could have just seen it. Oh, it would have been quite a task for me to get it here. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so I mean for me to get it here again would be quite a task because I actually travel with it in a huge box so it doesn't get damaged. Um, it, it was also 3D art which was had different angles and different shapes from different sides and it wasn't as strong because I wanted it to be light because for it to move it has to be light. If it's too heavy it wouldn't move, uh, rotate on the machine. Right. So it was light. So if it's light so it, it can get damaged easily. So for you to take it and travel all the way to Italy it had to be packaged really well. So it was almost like a cascade that I prepared like almost for a dead body almost and okay. it had so many layers of protection inside and packaging That's so it crazy. costed more for me to take the artwork than me traveling to Italy. Nice. nice. <laughs> that is yeah. crazy. <laughs> yes it was. So also That's this is... Awesome. Uh, yeah. Show us some more stuff about it. Yeah. I'll show you um, what other awesome stuff we get to see. This was um, published in an Italian daily newspaper their uh, Italian daily but I mean I can't really read Italian but it just says my name Torani <laughs> so it becomes <laughs> easier for you to see it again uh, Karan Torani as the finalist um, this is where the presentation happened the outside of the building I will present it this is me standing next to my artwork nice uh, so it was quite huge in scale um, also in in depth because it was about one feet deep so the box had to be that huge this is mm. while I gave my presentation. This is my portfolios and presentations. And oh, you took some other elements. Yes, because I had to also explain them. So uh, it had my diaries of making of how I made the process, oh, sketches, wow. everything else. Uh, Something to have seen in person. Yeah. <laughs> and 
and this is me standing next to it while I was giving my presentation. These are all the people who are all involved. All finalists. Yes. Some of them are the finalists. Others are the people of the competition who you know who organize oh. it. So only ten or fifteen of them are the finalists. How long has this been? Hello, Vilu. How long has it been going for? Uh, this competition has been going on for fifteen years, and this was their fifteenth anniversary. Uh, and in the 15 years, they've only had, uh, I mean, in the last 12 years, they've only had one Indian. Now, he was not blue, he is Bilu. That's what. <laughs> He's going to come after you and be like, say my name right. Are you on your boat? Are you on your boat? No, we're not on our Okay, so, um, good. You have anything else to show us? Well, anything you want to ask me, any questions, something? Yeah, I think you went through the process, uh, yeah. which I really liked, uh, and we saw the final artwork. Uh, so I would say, what's next for you? What well, are you be? Um, I plan to, uh, before this I was actually working with a lot of brands. I've, uh, I worked at Vogue India, I was uh, late, I'd worked with Manish Arora, the designer, and um, then later I was here working with uh, Miami Box and doing a lot of brand work, and now I decided since this happened, that um, now I think I'll uh, start my own brand uh, after this. I plan to again apply uh, for ITS next year and uh, also for uh, some international fashion shows where I can, uh, because the idea for me, um, uh, art or design is a bit more different maybe how uh, one would take it because it's, it's also about telling the stories of these craftsmen or these women who work around India and take their story forward and that's exactly what I did. I mean my entire concept was revolving uh, around uh, using Sikki mm. uh, or this craft more than anything else and that's what I plan to do in the future. The idea will be for me to uh, take this forward in terms of a craft or any craft even in my future projects globally mm. uh, and really uh, explain the worth of it <coughs> because um, like I said we only look at it from a uni perspective of uh, our craft and our history, but uh, more than just protecting that, <coughs> it also sustains nature, it sustains somebody's craft, it's sustaining mm. somebody's uh, talent, which might right. just die if we don't protect it as modern day designers. Uh, Ilo was asking, where do you get your inspiration from in general? Um, generally, um, I travel a lot around India and I work with craftsmen. So um, my, my inspirations are from the past and the history of uh, India. So I almost read a lot of stories everywhere I travel. And uh, it's actually quite interesting that our mythology is different in every place of the country that you travel mm -hmm. because uh, in each region uh, it, it changes a bit. They have their own versions of these same stories. The stories are same but they change it according to uh, wherever you go. So for example if you go to I mean, Sri Lanka is a bit away and it's a different country, but even if you go to Sri Lanka and go and live in a village there, work with their craftsmen, mm. they have a completely different version of Ramayana. Right. Because their Ram is not really a king, as per se, because he almost came to their country and destroyed it. Right. So everybody has a different version of it. And it's, it's quite interesting to uh, not just live with these people and understand their culture, but um, also to see how uh, stories, crafts and people differ. Uh, yes. in, in different places and almost actually just almost be like them and adapt it. Uh, someone is asking how, again I'll say someone because I can't remember names, I just see the question so apologies in, 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 in advance. Uh, but uh, how do, how much does an artist usually earn their saying in, in India? Well, um, and, again it's... And second question related to it is also, is there any gov government support for this artwork? That's a bit of a sad uh, story again, uh, the second question, but uh, I'll answer what first and then the second. The, well, an, an artist can, uh, it can be really relative of bringing on how, where you can take your talent and how much you can utilize it. Like for this, I didn't really get any support financially, you know, there wasn't um, somebody coming out and helping me, okay, now you're making this, so here we fund you for this, go mm -hmm. ahead and do this. Right. Of course, uh, the competition, the, the people who organized it gave us a certain amount of money to make this but all of it went, so you don't really earn much. Uh, for an artist, I think generally what happens is only when you become successful or you take a certain amount of years, or mostly when you die, <laughs> you become successful, but that's how it is. So it's, y you really have to be good with the PR skills of your promotions or doing it well, presenting it to the people well. Okay. Second, coming to the government, no, you don't get any support. We're trying really hard, but um, for me, to begin with, it has to come to the craftsmen first. I mean, I can still find support because I'm educated, I can learn and I can do things, I can speak and I can explain my work. But for these craftsmen, they are uh, 
completely on their own. Yes. So I really feel uh, more than me, the government should begin with them at the ground level mm. and then uh, go about coming to me. You know, oh because wow. I feel their craft uh, really needs help. They, and actually, Sikki, if, if it weren't for them, this is the last group which survives in Bihar. After this, if they don't survive, this craft will be dead. This will be over. This is it. So really? it's kind of a sad story. This is the last generation that's making yes, this? Yes, uh, and they are trying really hard. That's why they came together and made a group out of it. Otherwise, generally, people do it in their own houses. Yeah. So now these women are kindly trying to make a business out of it, coming together making this together uh, they say so the and they bought this uh, this land and then they asked the government to fund it and now and like i said there's not even electricity there it will take them a while to get electricity from the government they're working mm. in really terrible conditions there so why would the young generation uh, they're questioning pick up this as a po art form well, zafar is asking it in case he's i had some memories while i had some almonds while we were standing see i mean um Again, uh, it's it's each to his own of what the gom I mean the new generation wants to do. But um, as as an Indian designer, mm. uh, if you go global, I the only thing that I would question everybody who is in the creative sphere is to say, what is it that you bring which is so unique to you? It mm. is your craft and it is your Indian stories. Uh, because honestly, if you're really going about just being contemporary with the use of new modern technologies, uh, I'm sorry, but they already have it. What is it that you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. You bring your craft, you bring your stories, which are only unique because honestly, if you don't do it, nobody else in the world will. And uh, and you can actually capitalize on it. You can actually make money out of it if you're good at it, that is. And also because this craft, I mean, what we do in terms of hand making and hand weaving and all um, Indian stories is actually unique to us. When I traveled after my presentation, I, I traveled all around Europe. I went to Venice, Milan, Naples, Rome, Paris, and uh, uh, mostly to just see what in terms of art and craft is happening around you know globally mm. and what are these artists doing and uh, it's very sad but they've almost forgotten their history it's only in their museums so people go to their museums to see to the louvre and everywhere else oh, wow. but um, none of them are still surviving on those same history or culture it's only us who are uh, you know we, we still live on our crafts and and i mean you will still just see anybody else wearing a khadi kurta or a ajrak dupatta I mean, in terms of women, but they also still speak on their mobile phones, which is the iPhones, which is quite a contrast and a paradox which only remains in India. So, which is the beauty of it, and only we can promote it. And that's why I think the government today is um, using a hashtag like Smriti Irani just, I think, made it a rage with I, I love hand doom or things like this because it can only work in India. Uh, and when we begin and, and take South it. South Asia. We're a channel for South Asia. Yes, I mean, <laughs> but I'm saying Very that's, uh, I mean, what, what, what my story in general is. Yes, yes, that's you know. true, that's true. Thank you, Karan. A lot of, uh, a lot of great thoughts and the last, it's awesome to see young people like yourself with so much energy and enthusiasm, hopefulness. Yes. So you have hope. Most definitely. Actually, I have faith more than hope. I don't like the word hope because okay. it, it kind of it also gives you a negative connotation that it might just wrong. So you're hoping that it might, right, but right. it still has a might word. I have faith that it has to. I don't just hope. I have faith that it has to go right. What was your question? We didn't... Um, yes, people are thanking you, saying this guy is optimistic. Yes, he is. That's awesome. <laughs> and we need people who are optimistic to take this tradition and the arts further. Yeah, and that's great. So, or uh, ask your question if I did not ask your question, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. I think I asked his questions. Um, we'll wrap it up for this session. I think we talked for a long time. It felt really fast because I think you had a lot of interesting yeah. things to say. Thank you. Um, does he have such plans for Madhubani arts? Madhubani arts, you know about the Madhubani yes. Madhubani, Madhubani arts. art is basically a painting which is uh, done with vegetable colors, and they paint it. It happens in the same village. Uh, this is just a different cluster of women who do it. I also visited them, and I also plan to hopefully take it. I mean, they do it on cloth and on paper. So hopefully, um, uh, in one of my next projects, I do it. I've actually awesome. worked with uh, another cluster in Gujarat, so I keep traveling in different states. So whichever inspires me for those few months. Nice. So hopefully. Nice. Wonderful. Somebody commented about the our logo being behind you saying this gives us an optimistic <laughs> <laughs> look to the whole thing. Maybe you could do that in colors. Can you do something artistic with our logo? Yeah, most definitely. If I get paid for it though. Yeah, somebody has to go. pay me. <laughs> somebody has to pay you. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. No, the uh, the crafts one won't. So um, 
Well, the Warley Arts in Mumbai is also good. They're yes, saying, it is. Yeah. It's quite nice, actually. One of my friends did a project around that, and they um, uh, made up, you know, some accessories with the Warley Art. It's quite nice. Wonderful. Okay, so you know all your art, man. This is good. Like this person is testing your art skills. Yes, and, actually, and I mean, like uh, it's it's. I mean, not to. Uh, uh, I mean, go around it, but it's just that. I mean, I'm educated in uh, fashion design, so in 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 our college course, you actually have. A full semester dedicated only to crafts nice. to learn about uh, all the Indian crafts, and actually there are so many of it. So uh, even if you spend your entire lifetime just trying to cover the crafts, it yeah. won't be enough. But at least the names and the basics of it you could still learn. Nice, nice. Uh, well, thank you very much, Karan, thank again you. for coming to our studio and uh, having a little chat with us here in our corner. Uh, maybe we'll see you soon with some cool. Um, artwork of yours yeah. perhaps in future we should check it out so uh, people should check you out on Instagram and you'll have a website soon yes. you have your domain bought yet or no yes what uh, is it you can say it even yeah. if it's not up <laughs> it'll be up by the time people get to it well I have two domains one okay. is karanturani.com and the other one is taylortale.com awesome thanks man thank you thanks a lot alright thank you let's see how we